Pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome into our coverage of Tishomingo County Baseball right here on WRMG TV 12 and TV 97. Pleasure to be with you here this evening. Blake Long, we've got a big, big Division One 4A contest coming up right here. It'll be a rivalry matchup between the Itawamba AHS Indians and the Tishomingo County Braves. We're getting ready for the announcement of the starting lineups. As you see the introduction with the coaches, the conference meeting with the umpires has just concluded. We're going to have the starting lineups here for you in just a moment. We'll tell you about some of our fantastic sponsors along the way as well. And a big thank you for tuning in here this evening. We are live on our Mixler app. You can just simply go to WRMGRadio.com and then click on the link to listen to TCHS Sports. We're broadcasting. You can listen to us live from anywhere in the world on your computer, smartphone, or tablet. We appreciate you so much for doing so. If you know somebody out there and you're listening to us live, spread the word. And we will have that for you right here. Looks like we're about to have the Introduction of the starting lineups on the field. We'll start with Itawamba AHS, and we'll go through them with you here. Um, if we can hear the PA announcer, we may actually turn it up and let you listen live to it as well. But again, it's a big matchup. The Itawamba Indians coming in with a 7-8 and record. They defeated Tishomingo County on Tuesday night by a score of 13-3. And this, the return trip, the final meeting of the year between these two rivals. And Tishomingo County coming in with a 7-7 seven and seven overall record we'll see if we can't turn the microphone up here and we're gonna have the starting lineups introduced here on the field Playing first, Braxton Carroll. Batting six, playing second, Lane Domino. Batting seventh, catcher, Drew Hill. Batting eight, third baseman, Dawson West. Playing shortstop, batting ninth, Jake Smith. And the left fielder is Thomas Cox. Head coach is Steve Carroll. And the assistants are Sean Nichols, Colin Mingo, and Lee Ring. And now for your Tishomingo County Braves. Batting first and playing left field, Caleb Garner. Batting second, pitcher, Ty James. Batting third and playing third, Josh Watkins. Batting third and playing first, Katie Butler. Big pitcher, Ty Davis. Batting sixth and playing center field, Brady Angler. Batting seventh, shortstop, Alex Cornelius. If you arrive and take your head gear off, you'll do the national anthem. The world's a 
So we've had our on-field introduction of starting lineups. We've also had the national anthem, and we're just about ready for some baseball here. I'm going to go ahead and apologize in advance. Our camera view may be slightly more blurry than normal this evening. Of course, we have the net here in front of us for those of you watching the TV replay on YouTube or have purchased a DVD copy. A um, little, uh, little, of course, the barrier. We don't have at basketball or at the football stadium. Um, but we're going to do our best here to have a phenomenal broadcast for you. We're going to get started here with the top of the first inning coming up here in just a minute. We'll be telling you about our great sponsors. Let's go ahead and tell you about some of those as Ty James warms up for Tishomingo County. The Northeast signee getting the start here this evening on the mound for the Braves. He is the ace of the staff, a senior. He's had a phenomenal career in baseball. And there is Ty James on your TV screen. He wears jersey number eight, and he's the starter this evening for the Tishomingo County Braves. Here are some of our great sponsors for tonight's game. Mac Wyoming, Tishomingo County Corner for sponsoring the TCHS Braves. Gatlin's Pharmacy, are you spending too much out of your pocket? Are you in a donut hole? Have you ever priced your prescriptions at another store? Come see if we have other options to save you money. See the pharmacist you know and trust, Stanley Page. See if he can save you money at Gatlin's Pharmacy, your health mart pharmacy in downtown Tishomingo. Call 662-438-6605. I want to thank B&J Supermarket, Highway 365 South in Burnsville, open seven days a week. They're your hometown store where the prices are low 52 weeks in a year. They've got fresh produce, awesome meat and dairy department as well. Of course, they accept Visa, MasterCard, and EBT food stamps. There's the throwdown from the catcher. We're getting ready to go here as they'll meet on the mound. To Shemingo County, donning all white uniforms today. White tops, white pants. They've got blue cleats on. Got white caps with bi uh, blue bills with a TC emblazoned on the hat. They've got blue lettering and blue numerals on their jerseys as well. And Itawamba AHS Indians tonight looks like a black top with uh, gold trimming. Letters in white, the numbers are in black with a white outline. Here's the first pitch and it is a called ball 1-0. Indians have white pants, and they are going to be wearing white and black hats with the Ital or Cleveland Indian logo emblazoned on them. 1-0 count. It's a foul ball. We got a 1-1 one one count. First strike of the game for Ty James. We'll go through the starting lineup one more time in case you missed it at the top of the broadcast. And here is the starting offensive lineup for Itawamba AHS, again coming in with a 7-8 and eight record. Be leading off, this is the center fielder number two, Caleb Whittle. Here's the 1-1 one one pitch to him. It's inside, barely misses a hit by pitch there, two and one. Batting second, the on-deck batter is the fielder number 33, Tyler Patterson. Batting third is the pitcher this evening for the Indians, number 22, Russell Bunch. Here's the two-one pitch to Whittle. Say called strike, two and two. DH in the fourth spot for the Indians, number seven, Austin King. Batting fifth is the first base, base excuse me, first base number 15, Braxton Carroll. Batting sixth is the second base number 10, Lane Domino. We have a ground ball to the third baseman. Throw across is in time. And that's out number one recorded for Tishomingo County. So we got a 5-3 put out for Caleb Whittle in his first turn at bat. And that'll bring up Tyler Patterson. Let's finish off the Indian starting lineup in the seven spot. It's the catcher number 16, Drew Hill. Batting eighth is the third baseman number four, Dawson West. So that one is rolled into foul territory. Strike number one. And then in the ninth spot is the shortstop, number five, Jake Smith, not batting, is the left fielder, number six, Thomas Cox. He's being DH'd for by King. This again, Tyler Patterson. Here's the 0-1 pitch, and it's fouled away to the right side. In fact, onto the softball field. And speaking of the softball field, we have double barrel action, so to speak, here. The softball team is hosting Houston in a division game. Of course, we're here playing Itawan, but we've got broadcast coverage of both. we got the voice, the legend, Randall Lanz, going to be covering that game for us on WRMG. There's a called strike three, but the catcher dropped the ball. Put out at first base. If you're scoring at home, it's a drop third strike. Record it two to three in the put out. And that's quickly two outs for Ty James and the Tishomingo County Braves. The looking strike out there. Put out two to three at first base. Going to bring in number 22, Russell Bunch. But again, we've got softball coverage for you here coming up. There will not be a live broadcast, but you will be able to purchase the DVD, watch the game on replay on YouTube as well. Get our YouTube link. Just search for Jack Ivey in YouTube, first pitch to Bunch is fouled off, strike number one. 
but we've got you covered. We are the home of Tishomingo County Sports. This is WRMG TV 12 TV 97. I'm Blake Long. Thanks so much for tuning in. We've got to go through the defensive line for Tishomingo County for you here real quick. The left fielder is number 22, Caleb Garner. Center fielder number four, Brady Anglin. And right fielder number 10, Braden Maxey. Here's the 0-1 pitch to Bunch. It's called strike two. Nice off-speed pitch there for Ty James. In the infield, the third baseman's number 11, Josh Watkins. The shortstop's number one, Alex Corneliuson. The second baseman is number seven, Wheeler Brewster. And at first base, number 33, Cade Butler. We'll get you the battery here in just a minute. Here's a big 0-2 pitch. Oh, just off the plate there. Looked pretty good, but a one ball, two strike count it will be. The catcher for Ty James, the pitcher tonight, number 23, Michael Brown will go through the offensive lineup again for the Braves here in just a few minutes. One, two count now to Bunch. The payoff pitch, it's low and inside two and two. Bunch, the leader of this Itawamba AHS team. Going to be on the hill. We'll see him in the bottom half of this inning for the first time. Here's the two, two pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three, and Ty James Two strikeouts in the frame, and he records a fairly easy one, two, three. First inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. We've played a half inning. The score is Itawamba AHS 0 and Tishomingo County coming to bat. We will have second inning, excuse me, bottom of the first inning action coming up for you right here next on WRMG TV, 12 TV 97, brought to you by Daughtry Heating and Air and Commercial Refrigeration, located at 709 West Eastport Street in Iuka. They service what they sell. They're your local authorized train dealer. Don't forget, it's hard to stop a train. The phone number is 662-423-9207. One thing, Triple D's Bucket Service, Barney, Brandon, and Dustin Dick will try their best to meet all your high reach needs, whether it's trimming or removing a tree, debris removal, stump grinding, or cleaning a steeple. All are done in a professional manner. They are licensed, bonded, and insured. You can call 662-279-7500. Sponsoring tonight's Tishomingo County game. Also, John White, attorney at law. He's been serving Tishomingo County for many years from his office at 123 South Fulton in Iuka. Phone number is 662-423-3153. Big thanks as well to Davis Ford in Fulton, Northeast Mississippi's oldest Ford dealer. They've been in business for over 50 years. They're proud to sponsor Tishomingo County Athletics. See Buster and his staff for the best deals around. Save thousands down by calling 662-862-3711. Also, want to thank the IU Animal Clinic. Dr. James Perkins and his staff are available on Highway 25 South. Healthcare, grooming, and boarding for your pets. Hours are Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 7 a.m. until 5 p.m. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, they are open as well from 7 a.m. until 1 p.m. They're closed on Saturdays. Give them a call, 662-423-3470. Let's give you a look right now at the starting pitcher for the Itawamba AHS Indians, and that young man is Russell Bunch. Wearing jersey number 22, he just struck out to end the top half of the first inning. Jersey number 22, that's Russell Bunch. He's a senior for the Indians, and he's looking to give them a sweep over the Tishomingo County Braves. Again, Itawamba defeated Tishomingo County on Tuesday evening by a score of 13-3. to So the Braves are here looking for some revenge, and it'll start off with the leadoff man right here wearing jersey number 22. That's Caleb Garner. Again, Drew's number 22, he's leadoff batter. We'll go through the entire offensive lineup for the Braves here momentarily. Here's the first pitch to Garner, and it is a called strike, 0-1. Behind Garner, batting in the two holes, the pitcher, number eight, Ty James. Batting third is the third baseman, number 11, Josh Watkins. Batting fourth, the first baseman, number 33, Cade Butler. As Garner fouls that pitch off, he's down 0-2. Batting in the fifth spot is the designated hitter, number nine, Connor Davis. Batting six is the center fielder, number four, Brady Anglin. Batting seventh and playing shortstop, number one, Alex Corneliuson. And batting eighth is the right fielder, number 10, Braden Maxey. And batting ninth, the catch number 23, Michael Brown. Not batting for the Braves. Being DH'd four is number seven. That is Wheeler Brewster. Garner fouls that one away. We'll do it again. 0-2 is the count on Caleb Garner. We'll give you the defensive lineup for Itawamba AHS here momentarily. We'll uh, complete this at bat with Caleb Garner. Count 0-2 on Caleb wind up and the delivery 0-2 pitch so the outside good take there by Caleb Garner an off-speed pitch ball one nice curveball there by Bunch did not get Garner to bite on it so it's a one and two count now Caleb in the right-handed batter's box wind up and the delivery fastball gonna be fouled out of play and again off towards the softball field with well, softball parents and players keep their heads up uh, with this double barrel action going on 
um, with the complexes being located right beside each other here at Tishomingo County High School. Unfortunately, that's definitely the case. So heads up to those guys the entire game. Garner will swing and miss there. And that will be strike number three. And Bunch has retired his first batter of the game. That brings up Ty James wearing jersey number eight. Give you a little zoom in shot of him here. I believe he just put a cross in the dirt there. Awesome to see Ty James in the two hole. Just signed with Northeast yesterday. So congratulations to Ty James on signing with the Northeast Tigers. Be continuing his college baseball career. I believe uh, his dad played at Northeast as well. So a second generation Tiger, always good to see. He'll take ball one, one and oh. Here's the one oh offering. Be the outside corner strike number one. One and one count to Ty James. We'll uh, go through the Itawamba AHS defense with you here momentarily after this one one offering to Ty James. It'll be low in the dirt, ball two. Nice take there by Ty. Defensively, starting in the outfield, the left fielder is number six, Thomas Cox. The center fielder is number two, Caleb Whittle. And the right fielder is number 33, Tyler Patterson. Give the infield here in just a second. That pitch outside, checked his swing and did not go. Three and one. Itawamba coach is going to ask for help, and he, they say he did go. Not sure about that. Um, but the first base umpire says that Ty James went around. So the count now two and two after the check to the first base umpire. So two and two count, here is the offering. And it is outside well in the dirt, off speed pitch, tried to get him to chase one there. And the count now is full. Ty James has run the count full, three balls and two strikes. We have three man officiating crew here this evening with a man down the first and the third base line. Here's the wind up payoff pitch coming. It's a fastball and it's gonna be fouled out of play again back towards the softball bleachers. And we'll do the full count pitch once more. Infield for the Indians is this. Third baseman is number four, Dawson West. The shortstop is number five, Jake Smith. Second baseman, number 10, Lane Domino. And the first baseman is number 15, Braxton Carroll. We'll go through the battery here. Just a second, here comes another full count pitch to Ty James. And swing and a miss, strike three. Got him, looks like the fastball a little high and outside. Not much of a chance there for Ty to connect on that one. So Bunch has equaled James with two strikeouts now. And while we're mentioning Russell Bunch, his battery mate is the catcher, number 16, Drew Hill, and that completes the Itawamba defensive lineup. Two away here in the bottom of the first inning. That brings up the three-hole hitter, Josh Watkins. There's a pitch outside, ball one. A similar location to Ty James. I think Ty's pitch that he struck it on may have been a little bit higher in the zone, though. One and no count to Josh Watkins. Here's the pitch. Tipped into the catcher's mitt, strike number one. One ball and one strike, and we are just underway here if you're tuning in. Big thanks for being with us here. Got some a beautiful evening for Tishomingo County baseball. Pitch is look good here, but must have been outside. Two balls and one strike. We will certainly take that. Watkins, the third baseman for the Tishomingo County Braves, has a 2-1 count on him. He's ahead in the count. Here comes the pitch. Ground ball to the shortstop, and the throw across will be in time. A good scoop there by the first baseman for the third out of the inning. So for Tishomingo County, it'll be just like Itawamba in their first half. No runs on no hits, no errors, no runners left on base. A three up, three down inning. And just like that, we have played one frame. The score is Itawamba zero, Tishomingo County zero. We'll have... Second inning action coming up next here on WRMG. I want to continue to thank our sponsors, including Peyton Cummings. He's with Shemingo County Chancery Clerk. Also want to thank IUK Discount and Drugs, the Pharmacy Gifts, Driving Window, and Medication Synchronization. But thanks to pharmacists Chris Cornelius and Kurt Butler, 662-423-9039. Tiffin Motor Homes of Red Bay, Belmont, and IUK featuring the Allegro Homes, sponsoring tonight's broadcast. Also, the IUK Monument Company. They're located next to you can discount drugs, the highest quality at a reasonable price, 662-423-3203. John Ennis Daughtry is your Tishomingo County Sheriff, sponsoring tonight's broadcast. Also, Nunley Trucking Company, Herman and Darrell Nunley and their entire staff, phone number 662-424-0080. want to thank Gina Magnat, your Tishomingo County Tax Collector. Also, Milligan Ready Mix, 25 North, NIU, phone number is 662-423-6200. 
38. And don't forget, folks, we are selling copies of tonight's game on DVD. We've done a handful of baseball softball games around the weather that's moved through. We have had some nasty weather here in the past week or so. Uh, thankfully, everybody here is safe and sound. Got another chance of severe weather on Monday, so do be aware uh, on Monday of your surroundings and, and for the weather as well. But again, uh, we are blessed to be able to be the exclusive home to Shemingo County Baseball. If you want to get a copy of any of our games or any softball games as well, like I said, we're covering Tish County and Houston here this evening. Phone number is 662 454 9797. And that is for Jack or Denise Ivy. Give them a ring, they'll be able to hook you up with a DVD and a copy of any of Tishomingo County sports broadcasts we've done this year. Lead off ground ball back up the middle, shortstop's got it. Can he make the play at first base? Yes, indeed, nice play there. Started by the shortstop, Alex Corneliuson, one out away. Let's see if we can get a zoom in shot there of Alex. Phenomenal job by that young man. And Alex Corneliuson making a beautiful play for the first out of the inning. Ty James is going to work now with one away. Always good to get that first out under you. And he'll throw a strike one on the outside corner. So King grounds out six to three on, I believe, the first pitch of the top of the second. Now ground ball to the second baseman. He fields it. No, it's not fielded cleanly. It'll be an error on the second baseman, giving Itawamba their first base runner of the game. So we'll charge that error to Wheeler Brewster, and that allows Braxton Carroll to reach first base safely. James will now have to go to the windup for the first time. With a runner on first base, that was Braxton Carroll, the first baseman who reached safely on the air. Now the Indians will bring to the plate. We'll get you his name in just a second. Could be a ground ball double play, though. Six, four, got him three. Yes, sir. Nice double play. It went Corneliuson to Brewster, and then over to the first baseman, Cade Butler, to retire the side. No runs, no hits, one error, but it was erased on the 6-4-3 double play turned by the Tishomingo County Braves. Beautiful, beautiful double play, and that will get the Braves out of the jam after giving up the one-out error. So Lane Domino grounds it to the double play, also erases Carroll on the force out 6-4 if you're scoring at home. And that'll be one and a half innings in the scorebook. The score remains zero all as Itawamba Tisha Mingo County. Always a classic battle when these two teams get together. This rivalry dates back to two decades old, if not longer. Itawamba and Tisha have been in the same division with each other for pretty much two decades now. That will change next year. Itawamba going to be moving down to Division Two for a and Tisha Mingo County will get a new look division next year in the baseball dominant across all sports, actually. Um, so we're looking forward to getting some new opponents next year. Um, but for now, we've got to wrap up a classic rivalry battle here, and we need a big win here tonight. Tishomingo County is going to bring four, five, six to the dish to begin the second inning. There you see the leadoff batter for the second inning will be number 33, Cade Butler. He'll be followed by Connor Davis, the designated hitter. I want to thank Piggly Wiggly, Vayuka, Red Bay, and Belmont. They're your hometown grocery store, the store that supports all of our local teams here on WRMG TV 12 TV 97. Jack Ivey is on location tonight doing Belmont and Morville baseball. So we've got three different crews out this evening covering our local sports teams. And again, Randall Lindsay going to be covering the Houston Tishomingo County fast pitch softball game that is beginning here in just a few minutes. They had their JV game first, like uh, the baseball team had. They are about to get underway as I look to my right. I believe the umpires are meeting there right now. We're here in the bottom of the second inning. It's Itawamba 0, Tishomingo County 0. 1 0 pitch coming to Cade Butler, the first baseman for the Braves. Here it comes. And it is a called strike 1 and 1. You want to thank Grace Long Real Estate. Let them help you sell your home. They're sponsoring tonight's game 662 423 5555. Grace and her staff will work hard for you. Line drive to the right side, a base hit, and that's the first hit of the game for either team. Bobbled slightly by the right fielder, but he will get it back in. And it's a base hit for Cade Butler, the first of the game for, as I said, for either team. But it comes off the bat of Cade Butler, and he's feeling good there, dancing along at first base. A single to the right side. 
You see him there. Going to get some instructions in a minute from Coach Jim McKay. Of course, the head coach of the Tishomingo County Braves is Blake Holly. He's assisted by Seth Kennedy and Coach Jim McKay. Great coaching staff these young men have to work for here. And here is the designated hitter, Connor Davis. Going to have a pickoff throw to first base. Safe maybe seeing if Connor gave away a bunt here. Would be a good bunting situation. Connor, though, the designated hitter in the five-hole spot for the Braves. First hit of the game for either team. And Connor will show bunt, pulls back, and takes ball one. A good eye there by number nine. That is, again, Connor Davis. Braves have nice uh, helmets, blue with silver trimming, made by Easton. Back in the batter's box now, wind up, and here's the one of delivery. Connor's going to show bunt early, and we'll pull back and take bunt two. Now throw back down to first base, not in time. Butler back in easily, 2-0 count now. And Connor Davis is in a good spot here. We'll see what Coach Blake Holly puts back on. But again, count is 2 and 0. Oh. Davis has been showing bunt. He will again. Pulls back and takes ball three. So first 3-0 oh count we've seen from either pitcher today. Got Butler standing at first base. Davis going to show bunt. He'll pull back here, and it'll be a strike right down the middle. Three and one count now to Connor Davis, the designated hitter, batting in the five hole for the Tishomingo County Braves. Again, he's batting for Wheeler Brewster, the second baseman. Reminder, we are live right now at WRMGradio.com. Just click the TCHS Sports link. If you're listening live, thanks so much for doing so. There's a bunt. It's a beautiful bunt down the right in front of the catcher. The throw is to first base for the out. And Connor Davis does his job, gets Cade Butler to second base, and he will get a warm welcome back to the dugout here in just a second by his peers. So that's one away now. Cade Butler advances to second base. And the Braves are in business, their first runner in scoring position of the game. Foul that one may go out of play. Actually going to go into the Tishomingo County dugout. Brady Anglin in the batter's box now. He's the starting center fielder for Tishomingo County. First left-handed batter we've seen this game. Again, Cade Butler. You're going to see him. If you're watching the TV replay, standing out on second base right now. Get a lead off there. A healthy lead if that. Bunch in the windup. Anglin in the batter's box. And here's the delivery. Inside. Going to be ball number one. One and one count now to Brady Anglin. In the, in the on deck circles, Alex Corneliuson. See if we can get to him here in a minute. Here's the one one pitch outside. Umpire doesn't give him the corner. It was close, but a good call by our home plate umpire. Two and one count. As the catcher for the Indians. That is Hill definitely set up outside on that pitch. Quickly working, here's the 2-1. That one is a strike on the outside corner, 2-2. Two two. You can see a trend here early. Indians wanting to live outside on their pitches. Have gone inside just a very few times. See if they may go off speed here on 2-2. Two two. Catcher's going to set up on the inside a little bit here. Here's the pitch. And it is inside, does not get the call from the umpire. And we have a full count now. Full count. Big pitch coming here to Brady Anglin. Three and two, one away. Big pitch coming right here from Bunch. Here it is. Line drive, past the shortstop and off his glove into left field. Coach Holly's going to hold Butler at third base, and the Braves continue to be in business. It's going to be a single for Brady Anglin. Good job there by Anglin. We'll give you a look at him there in the first baseline. So the Braves have runners on the corners with one away, and Corneliuson will step to the plate, the first real scoring threat for either team in this game. And let's see if Corneliuson can come through for the Tishomingo County Braves. Second hit of the inning followed by Cade Butler's hit. And now one away. Big situation here for the Braves. 
Squeeze play. It was a safety squeeze. Now the throw is cut off by the second baseman. It'll be a stolen base for Brady Anglin on top of the single. And now Tisha Mingo County has runners at second and third, one away. So Cornelison with a safety squeeze, pulled the bunt back. The runner at third stopped about, oh, we'll say five or six steps down the third baseline and retreated back quickly to the bag. It's a pitch right down the middle there, strike one, one and one count. Big situation, a big hit here from Alex Corneliuson. Wearing jersey number one for the Braves. Wind up from Bunch. Here's the delivery. It's a curveball and he hung it and got away with it. Strike number two call. Butler standing on third base, led off with a single. He was sacrificed over to second base by Connor Davis and then advanced to third base on the single from Brady Anglin. Anglin has stolen second, and here comes the one-two pitch to Corneliuson. It's grounded up the middle, going to go to the second baseman. It's booted, a chance for Corneliuson to reach. We have an out at first base, but the RBI is recorded. It's an RBI ground out for Alex Corneliuson. We'll take it, and the Braves have a 1-0 lead. Cade Butler scores on the play, and you see there that Anglin advanced all the way to third base on the play, and there's the hero there, Corneliuson, with the RBI ground out returning to the dugout. And the Braves ahead of their rivals, the Itawamba Indians, by a score of one to nothing. Pitch next to Braden Maxey's ball one. So again, record that, a 4-3 with an RBI. And Butler scores the run. 1-0 Braves. That's a pitch right down the middle, maybe low on the inside corner, strike number one. One and one count now. Braden Max, he's in the eight hole for the Braves. He's the starting right fielder. Of course, she's been the quarterback for the Braves for three consecutive years on the football gridiron. Pitch inside, did it graze him? No, they're going to say it did not hit him. Got awful close, though, on an off-speed pitch. One and, excuse me, two and one now the count to Braden Maxey. Got Brady Anglin standing on third base. He singled, stole second, and then advanced to third on that ground out from Corneliuson. Foul ball out of play, or it will actually stay in the field off the netting over the Itawamba dugout, and that is strike number two. One and two count. Braves have another potential run scoring opportunity. You're going to need a big two out hit here, though, maybe a wild pitch, something along those lines. Two and two count, big pitch coming here from Russell Bunch. And here it comes right now. It is a swing and miss. It's in the dirt. Going to have to throw him out at first base, and he will. And that will retire the side. Anglin cannot score. But the Braves get the first run on the scoreboard, and that's a big thing in itself. One run on two hits, no errors for the Indians. One runner left on base, and we've played an inning, excuse me, two innings now. Two innings in the books. The score, Tishomingo County one, and Itawamba zero. One zero, Braves ahead. And we've played two innings in this Division one for a competition. Well, folks, now's the time to get that new mower. The prices have never been better, and these selections are great. Bush hog mowers are dependable and solid. They are offered in the state commercial and professional series. Whether you're a lawn care professional who requires productivity and dependability in your machine, or a homeowner who wants professional results in a fraction of the time, smile, Bush hog has the mower to meet all your needs. So if you've got a Bush hog mower, dig and get it at SIDS. At SIDS Training Company, Sid Whitehurst, your owner, phone number 662-424-0025. Tonight's game also being brought to you by Ronnie Cook and Modern Woodman of America. To plan for your financial future and learn about member benefits, get to know your Modern Woodman representative, and that is Ronnie Cook. Call him at 662-423-8477 to start the conversation. I also want to thank Mac Wyoming, Tishomingo County Coroner, for sponsoring tonight's Tishomingo County Baseball Action. Also, Gatlin's Pharmacy. Are you spending too much out of your pocket? Are you in a donut hole? Have you ever priced your prescriptions at another store? Come see if we have other options to save you money. See the pharmacist you know and trust, Stanley Page, and see if he can save you money. That's at Gatlin's Pharmacy. They're your health mart pharmacy in downtown Tishomingo. Call 662-438-6605. So here we go. Ty James going to work until the top of the third inning. His first pitch is a ball. It'll be the seven, eight, and nine hitters for the Indians, starting with Drew Hill, the catcher wearing jersey number 16. A line drive going to left field, and he's got it. Nice job there by the Braves. And Caleb Garner takes a couple of steps to his left and records that. We'll see if we can get a zoom in there of Caleb in left field. Yes, we can. Good job there by Caleb Garner, recording out number one for the Tishomingo County Braves. If you're scoring at home, it's an F7. 
And here's the to the eight hole hitter for the Indians. Be a strike one. That is Dawson West, the third baseman. Nine hole hitter is on deck as that ball's fouled away. 0 and 2 count now. Got Jake Smith on the on deck circle for the Indians. And again, Dawson West in the batter's box. 0-2 count to West. Here comes the pitch from James. It's inside. Had a chance to hit him. A couple of Itawama batters could have taken hit by pitches but have avoided them. Um, so a break for the Braves in that sense. 1-2 count now. James, 1-2 delivery. Foul. Ooh, barely got a tip on that one. A good job there by West just to get a piece. Probably would have been ball two had he not offered at it. Um, but he will stay alive. The count will remain one ball and two strikes. We got a pretty good crowd here tonight at the ballpark. Several of a contingency from Itawamba High School. Also got several Tishomingo County fans as well. A lot of people here spread between softball and baseball here this evening. Again, my partner in crime, Randall Lindsay, is broadcasting the softball game right now. We'll, we'll have that game for you on YouTube and also. You'll have it on TV replay and also the opportunity to purchase DVDs of both the softball and our baseball game this evening. Again, that phone number is 662-454-9797. Softball DVDs play in Houston. And again, of course, our baseball game here this evening with the Itawamba Indians available to purchase on DVD. Full count pitch is fouled off, and we will do it again here in just a few moments. Got some great sponsors that have stuck with us all year long. Of course, we have broadcast every football game this year. We've got several basketball games in the book as well. And now a majority of our sponsors have stuck with us into baseball and softball. And we want to tell them that we appreciate them so very much. There's a dribbler right back to Ty James. He'll throw to first base for out number two. So Ty James has allowed one base runner to reach by error, but it was a race and he has faced the minimum so far. Two out. That'll bring up the nine-hole hitter, Jake Smith. Ground ball, and there's the first base hit of the day for the Indians going down the left field line. Fielded there by Garner, and he will fire it in to second base. And the Indians will have their first base hit of the game off of Ty James. And it's a base hit to left field by the nine-hole hitter, Jake Smith. That brings back to the top of the lineup for the Indians. And we have Tom Collis, like a baseball being thrown back in to the home plate umpire. Caleb Whittle will be in the batter's box now. And he grounded out to third base in his first plate appearance for the Indians. James again in the windup. Here's the pitch. It's going to be a fly ball to Braden Maxey in right field. And he will run in and he will have that one. And that's going to be the third out of the inning. For the Indians in the third inning, no runs on one hit. No errors. And one runner left on base at first base, to be specific. And it'll be the first runner left on base of the game for the Indians. But we have played two and a half innings now. And the score in this one is Tishomingo County 1 and Itawamba AHS 0. Tonight's game being brought to you by B&J Supermarket, Highway 365 South here in Burnsville. They're open seven days a week. They're your hometown store where the prices are low, 52 weeks in a year. they got fresh produce and awesome meat and dairy department as well. And they accept Visa, MasterCard, and EBT food stamps as well. Also want to thank Triple D's Bucket Service. Barney, Brandon, and Dustin Dick will try their best to meet all your high-reach needs, whether it's removing a tree, debris removal, stump grinding, or cleaning a steeple, all done in a professional manner. They are licensed, bonded, and insured. You can call 662-279-7500 for more information. Today's game also being brought to you by Darcy Heating and Air and Commercial Refrigeration, located at 709 West East Fort Street in Iuka. They service what they sell. They are your local authorized train dealer. Don't forget, folks, it's hard to stop a train. The phone number for them is 662-423-9207. Looks like we're getting ready now for the bottom of the third inning. Indians have completed their between inning warm-ups, and we're going to have coming up the 9-1-2 batters for the Braves. Going to start with the catcher, number 23, Michael Brown. He's in the batter's box now. There you get a good close-up of him there. Bottom of the third inning, Tishomingo County has a run on two hits and one error. Itawamba, no runs on one hit. They are clean in the field. Bunch will work here in the third inning. It's pitch outside, ball number one. Again, we'll flip things back to the top of the lineup here in just a moment. Caleb Garner on deck for the Braves. 
Pitch catches the outside corner, strike number one. One ball and one strike. Lights are on here in Iuka. Beautiful evening for baseball. If you're in the area and tuning in, come on out and see us here. It's a beautiful evening for high school baseball and softball as well. We got Houston in town for softball. Of course, the Itawamba Indians are here in town for some baseball action. One and two count now to Michael Brown. Pitch and offering. It's a curveball hit into right field. Should be catched by the right field, and it will be. And a nice job running that one down there by the right fielder for the Indians. That's wearing jersey number 33. That is Tyler Patterson, who records the out. One away here. And we'll, we'll flip it back to the top of the lineup now. Caleb Garner, the starting left fielder for the Braves. Here's the first pitch to him. And it's ball one in the dirt. Garner 0 for 1 in this game, struck out in his first plate appearance. Part of a 1-2-3 inning thrown by Russell Bunch in the bottom of the first inning. Wind up and the pitch. It's a strike on the outside corner. One and one. Hope you're enjoying our broadcast here this evening. We're going to have several more baseball and softball games on TV for you here. As we reach April tomorrow, hard to believe tomorrow is April 1st, the final month of the regular season of the high school baseball season. What well, just seems like baseball and softball fly by extremely fast compared to basketball season, especially which is spread out over four months. But here we are in the heart of the schedule now, division play firmly underway. All these teams are fighting for a playoff spot, and they're going to say that Garner went around. The catcher will go ahead and throw it down to first base, but Garner will walk or run back to the dugout, I should say and he has struck out for the second time in this game. Ty James, the final hope for the Braves here in the bottom of the third inning. He struck out in his first plate appearance as well, 0 for 1. Of course, has had a solid game on the bump so far for the Braves, only allowing two base runners, one by air and one on a single with two outs in the last frame. That's a fly ball to center field, but should be a routine play, and it will be caught by the center fielder for out number three. So the Braves are tied in order, no runs, no hits, no errors. No runners left on base, and we've played three full innings now here in Iuka with the score Tishomingo County 1 and Itawamba 0. Again, James retired on a fly out to center field, and that'll wrap up our third inning of competition. We've got some Itawamba fans to my right here. What's going on, guys? It's, it is live right now. What's y'all's names? Brandon. Drake West. Drake, good to meet you guys. Y'all having fun tonight? Good deal. Pull it for the Indians, I'm sure. Awesome. Good deal. Good deal. Well, it's good to meet you fellas. Got, a, like I said, a big crowd out here tonight. These guys have been here to my right cheering on the Indians all night long. And Itawamba's going to bring up to the plate. There are two, three, and four hitters here in just a minute. Tyler Patterson will be the leadoff batter here in the fourth inning for the Indians while they're getting warmed up. I want to tell you about John Water Attorney at Law, sponsoring tonight's broadcast. He's been serving Tishomingo County for many years from his office at 123 South Fulton in Iuka. His phone number is 662-423-3153. Also want to thank Davis Ford in Fulton, Northeast Mississippi's oldest Ford dealer, for sponsoring tonight's game. With 50 years of experience, they are proud to sponsor the Tishomingo County Brace. See Buster and his staff for the best deals around, or call 662-862-3711. Also, quickly, I want to thank Dr. James Perkins and the staff at the IU Animal Clinic. Dr. James Perkins and the folks located at Howard 25 South Healthcare Grooming and Boarding for your pets. Hours are Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 7 a.m. until 5 p.m. And also on Tuesdays and Thursdays, they are open 7 a.m. until 1 p.m. Closed on Saturdays, call them at 662-423-3470. So we mentioned in the top of the third inning, that a few of the Walmart batters had come close to being hit by a pitch. Well, the jinx bug got me there as Patterson. The first pitch at the top of the fourth, he is hit by a pitch, and he takes first base on a free pass. So leadoff man on for the first time this game for Itawamba, and that'll bring up the pitcher for the Indians, Russell Bunch. James in the windup. Here is the delivery. It's a ball in the dirt. Blocked up there by the catcher. Good job by Michael Brown on the block there. One and no count. Patterson again is at first base following the HBP. James will step off. 
One and no count. Edwamba only has one hit to their credit. Came in the last inning on a two out single by Jake Smith. The other pitch in the dirt is going to get past the catcher, and he takes him a while to find it. Back to the brick backstop, and it'll allow Patterson to advance to second base. Got a lot of baseball action coming up over this weekend. It's going to have some beautiful weather. The Northeast Tigers are at home tomorrow. Going to be taking on Jones County. If you're in the area tomorrow, come by and see us at Harold T. Whitefield. Going to be a 1 o'clock start. If not, you can watch the Tigers tomorrow on NEMCCTV.com. And, of course, we want to say again our congratulations to Ty James, the pitcher tonight for the Braves on signing with the Northeast Tigers. It's going to be good to cover him for the next two years in a black and gold uniform in Boonville. Of course, getting ready to build that brand new beautiful baseball softball complex there on the Boonville campus. Big things happening at Northeast, and we congratulate Ty on his decision to become a Northeast Tiger. James, going to be a big pitch here, two and one. It's low again, and the count now three and one. So Bunch well ahead in the count here, and a chance to have two runners on with nobody out. The runner at second base is Patterson. He was hit and then advanced on a wild pitch. Bunch, ground ball to third base. They're going to look the runner back, and now he's going to take off. There's the throw. We're going to go back to third base. It's thrown down the line, but a good job there of backing the play up. Let's give credit to shortstop Alex Corneliuson for backing that play up. Ty James was there as well. The throw by first baseman Cade Butler was wild, but it does not cost the Braves. So we will record the ground out for Bunch, 5-3, to three, but it's pretty much the same thing as a sacrifice bunt as it allowed Patterson to move over from second to third base. Now the Indians just a few feet away from tying the game. Braves clean to a 1-0 lead as Austin King sips into the batter's box. The pitch is going to be a slow ground ball, and it will roll foul there. Good job by Ty James of waiting and picking it up foul. So King will retreat to the batter's box from first base, and we will do it again. 0-1 count will be charged to Austin King, who grounded out to the shortstop in his first plate appearance. Again, the current line right now, no runs, one hit, no errors for Itawamba. One run on two hits and one error for Tishomingo County. 0-1 pitch coming from Ty James. Ground ball again to the third baseline foul. We'll do it again here in a minute. 0-2 count, though, to King. Science game being brought to you by Tisha Mingo. Any chance to reclerk Peyton Cummings. Also, IUK Discount Drugs, Pharmacy Gifts, Driving Window, and Medication Synchronization. Some of the services of pharmacist Chris Cornelison, Kurt Butler, and the entire staff there at IUK Discount Drugs. Phone number is 662-423-9039. Big pitch coming right here, 0-2. Here's the offering. It's going to be a ground ball to first base, and they may have him throw back to third. He is safe. And King advances all the way to second base on the play. Well, they had Patterson in no man's land, to be honest with you. He was about halfway between home plate and third base. First baseman Butler decides to throw it to third base and get him back, but third base umpire says that Patterson will reach and get back his hand in before the tag was applied there by Josh Wadkin. So it'll go down if you're scoring at home. That's a fielder's choice for Austin King, and he will reach second base on that fielder's choice. Now the corners are in for the Braves. Middle still playing back. will sacrifice a run if it's into the shortstop or, third, or second baseman. And it's going to be on Braxton Carroll. He reached on an error in his first at bat. Later was erased on a 6-4-3 double play. Strike one. Inside, ball number one, one and one. But that breaking ball pitch from Ty James is running inside and then dropping. He's getting close to hitting several batters and, had, of course, has hit one this inning in Tyler Patterson. Indians have two in scoring position without giving up a hit. And there's ball number two, same thing on that breaking ball pitch. Let's see if Ty James can make the adjustment here. Two and one is the count. Wind up and the delivery. The ground ball, will it go foul? Yes, it will. Good job there by Watkins letting it go foul. So we'll do it again here in just a few moments. The count will be two balls and two strikes to the five-hole hitter, Braxton Carroll. 
Tonight's game also being brought to you by Tiffin Motor Homes of Red Bay, Belmont, and Iuka. Of course, they feature the Allegra Homes. Also, big thanks to the Iuka Monument Company. They are located next to Iuka Discount Drugs, the highest quality at a reasonable price. Phone number is 662-423-3203. Big pitch here, two and two on the way. It's low in the dirt, blocked up there. Actually, may have hit the umpire. The Braves may have caught a break there. And it is three and two. Yeah, the, the catcher asking the umpire if he's good. Yeah, so that one. Uh, Braves catch a big, big break there as it got past Brown, but deflected off the umpire. Now we got a full count pitch here, going to be coming up to number 15, Braxton Carroll. Braves leaning out in the worst way here. Runners at second and third, one away. Here's a big pitch from James. It'll be ball four. Didn't get the call from the home plate umpire. Ty James wanted it. And now, without a hit, the Indians have loaded the bases. Patterson on the hit by pitch, standing at third base. King reached on a fielder's choice, now at second base. And then Carroll, now standing at first base, walked. That'll bring up Lane Domino. And again, now the Braves certainly playing double play depth. Domino did ground into a double play in his first plate appearance. Let's have a repeat performance here, shall we? Inside, nearly hit him again, ball one. James is going to have to adjust on that breaking pitch a little bit. If he can adjust it, bring it over just a little bit, that'll come right into the strike zone for a strike. Here's the 1-0 offering. Ground ball, third base, going to tag the bag, throw to first, thrown away. And Butler's going to have to run it. Going to have a play at the plate, and safe. And on the throwing error, on the throwing error, the Braves or the Indians are going to concede. No, they're going to say he's safe. He the bag on fourth play. And now the umpire is going to say that the runner was safe. Now they're going to make an appeal play. And safe is the call. And Coach Blake Hall is going to get an explanation here on this one. It should be a fielder's choice play there. We have, should have one runner out. And now our umpires are going to meet here. There had to be a force out there at third base when he touched the bag. So it should be runners at second and third, a tie game one to one. Coach Holly is going to apparently not going to be satisfied here. And we're going to have a 2-1 game. I believe we're going to have one out here as they call the runner at third base safe. Yet one out. My goodness. And now the home plate umpire is going to bring his entire crew together. No matter what, it, Domino cannot get credit for a hit. It'll be in fielder's choice. And now again, let's go. We're going to see the umpire crew assemble here by the mound. By the fourth plate. Braves are saying they should at least have one out here. And now we're going to have the home plate umpire come over. I'm honestly not sure what's, what they're trying to explain to Coach Holly here, but if there's going to be less than two outs, there's, there's been an error in judgment here. So we'll wait and see how many fingers the umpires hold up. Should be two outs in a one-to-one -one game. Yep, it is two outs now. And that is the correct call. So it'll be a fielder's choice RBI, and we will give an error to our third baseman for allowing... Domino to advance to second base and also allowing Carroll to advance to third base. So that is the second error of the game, and I believe we're going to get out of this pop fly right field. The second baseman's going to call off everybody, and good job by Wheeler Brewster there to record the out. So after all the hubbub, 
Itawamba does get a run. It's going to be one run on no hits. That was one brave error and two runners left on base. And now we've played three and a half innings with a score is Itawamba one, Tishomingo County one. You see the brave huddle there in front of the dugout. We'll keep the camera there. And we're going to have a one-to-one -one game as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. On an F4 there by Drew Hill. Drew Hill pops out to the second baseman to end the frame. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. The score is a one one to Shemingo County one. Fourth inning action continues to be brought to you by John Dennis Dartrey, your Tishomingo County Sheriff. Also, Nunley Trucking Company, Herman and Darrell Nunley, and their entire staff available at 662-424-0080. Also want to thank your Tishomingo County Tax Collector, Gina McNatt. Also, Milligan Ready Mix, little 25 North in Iuka. Phone number is 662-423-6238. Piggly Wiggly of Iuka. Lowest prices, hometown friendly service with locations in Red Bay and Belmont as well. The grocery store that supports all our local teams here on TV 12 and TV 97. Also want to thank Grace Long Real Estate. Let them help you sell your home. 662-423-5555. Grace and her staff will work hard for you. Also want to thank H&R Block. Of course, it's tax season. Don't forget, though, your tax professionals and I, you can Red Bay and Fulton. They're sponsoring the Tishomingo County Braves this evening. Well, we get ready for the bottom of the fourth, and Coach Holly still talking to our third base umpire for the evening. Uh, the Braves did win the argument. Originally, um, we had a, a safe call at third base, which would have allowed Itawama to take the lead, but uh, eventually got the call correct, and that only one run scored on that crazy play um, where the ball was hit by Lane Domino to the third baseman. He touched on third for the legal force play, but then his throw to first base went down the first base line and allowed a couple of runners to advance. So you do have to charge an error there on Josh Watkins. Um, but thankfully, the game remains in a tie one to one as an RBI fielder's choice for Lane Domino. So here's the Braves back to the batter's box. A one one game, gonna have the three, four, five hitters up and it is Josh Watkins leading off for Tishomingo County. And he is hitting the helmet, oh my. Thankfully, looks like Watkins trying down to first base. You know they're going to check on him uh, as strict as they are in concussion protocol these days. Look at Coach McKay over there, and he's signaling he's safe and good to go. So Josh Watkins hit by a pitch. Now both teams have one man hit by pitch. And let's see if Cade Butler can convert this into a, uh, another situation that the Braves can score in. Butler singled in his first at bat. He's one for one on the day. He's in the batter's box now. Here comes the pitch from Russell Bunch. And it's a curve ball, gonna get a call strike on it, 0-1. Butler the first baseman for the Braves. Need to get that run back here in the fourth. Don't waste any time on it. The pitch high and tight, one and one now the count to Butler. And you've been hearing our great sponsors throughout the game, make sure and go by and, and and if you're going to go out and if you're going to get your taxes done, you haven't got that done already, if you need a place to eat somewhere to take care of your air conditioner, tree removal, anything of that nature, take a look at our sponsors. And when you're there, tell them thank you for sponsoring Tishomingo County Athletics. We want to thank them especially because they've stuck with us from football season in the fall now through basketball season and into baseball and softball season. A lot of great businesses here, and we want to tell them how much we appreciate them. Now we've got time on the field. And looks like we're going to be good to go. One and one count after the pick play to first base was no good. And Butler in the batter's box. Watkins is at first base after he was hit by a pitch in the helmet. Here's the delivery. Be outside and high ball two. Two and one. Good eye there by Cade Butler. Already off to a good day. Had that single in the second inning. Came around to score on the RBI ground out by Alex Corneliuson. 2-1 pitch, and it's on the way. Low for ball three. Good eye there. Well, Bunch wanted that call, but did not get it. Three and one now the count to Cade Butler. Again, a good crowd has filed in here this evening. Both baseball and softball in action here in Iuka. Randall Lindsay, my partner for Tish County football and basketball, is covering the fast pitch game right now. Again, you can purchase DVDs of the fast pitch game tonight or 
of the baseball game here that we're broadcasting right now, 662-454-9797. That is the phone number to call Jack or Denise. I even get your copy of Tishomi County Sports. Of course, you can go ahead and we'll have those basketball and football DVDs available for you as well. If you forgot to get your copies, we have the entire football season, a majority of our basketball games. And, of course, it's been our pleasure to bring them to you, and we want to thank our sponsors again for allowing us to bring you those games. We're going to have a mound visit now by Itawamba as Bunch just gave up a hit batsman in a walk, so two free passes in a row for Bunch, and it's in a tie ball game, one-to-one. -one, going to draw on a, a meeting by the Indians, and also we're going to see the Braves huddle up here down the third baseline around Coach Blake Holly. So while we have a timeout, we'll give you some more of our phenomenal sponsors bringing you the action this evening. We want to remind you that SID's now an authorized dealer for the Landmaster Utility Vehicle. Landmaster was designed with your every need in mind. The LM200 runabout is a quick, lighter-duty vehicle. Medium-duty jobs such as moving mulch, towing, and mower can be handled with the LM300 or LM400. The more powerful LM650 or LM700 is well suited for heavy-duty chores and more rugged terrain. Or you can just jump in and enjoy the ride. Whatever your ride, SID's has it for you. Don't forget, folks, if you've got a bush hog, mower, dig, get it at SID's. That's SID's training company. Phone number is 662-424. Double zero, twenty-five. 25 Folks, Modern Woman offers financial services and fraternal member benefits to individuals and families throughout the United States of America. Serving your community, call Ronnie Cook at 662-423-8477 to start the conversation. Modern Woman of America on the web at modern-woodman.org. A failed bunt play there as Davis trying to sacrifice for the second straight at bat. And thrown out at third base was Josh Watkins. So it's going to be a fielder's choice on the play. And the out retired at third base. As Watkins nearly beat it out, but unfortunately just about a half a step um, was a good play there by Russell Bunch to retire the out at third base. And good communication from the Edwamba infielders to go to third base on that play. Now ground ball on the right side, foul ball. 0-1 oh, count. Brady Anglin had a hit in his first play appearance, opposite field single. Then stole second base. He's one for one. He has the other hit for the Braves. Butler has one. And Anglin has one. A one count. Pitch, ground ball straight at the shortstop. Six to four, the throw to first, and it is an out. So the Indians... Will roll a double play of their own and get out of an inning. The Braves had runners at first and second with nobody out. And after a failed sack bunt attempt and a double play, the Braves cannot come up with anything. No runs on no hits. There were no errors. One runner left on base. And we've played four complete innings with a score. And all knotted up. It's at a Wamba one and Tishomingo County one. Tonight's game being sponsored by your Tishomingo County Coroner, Mac Wildman, also Gantlin's Pharmacy in Tishomingo. See the pharmacist you know and trust, Stanley Page. See if he can save you money at Gantlin's Pharmacy, your Health Mart Pharmacy, phone number 662-438-6605. B&J Supermarket is a Highway 365 South in Burnsville. Of course, they're open seven days a week. They're your hometown store where the prices are low 52 weeks in a year. I want to thank Dr. Hegan Aaron, Commercial Refrigeration, 662 423-9207. They are your local authorized train dealer. Don't forget, it's hard to stop a train. Of course, they're going to go by and see them. They're located at 709 West East Fort Street in Iuka. I want to give a big thanks to Barney, Brandon, and Dustin Dick and the folks over at Triple D's Bucket Service. Don't forget, all year they handle all your high reach needs, whether it's trimming or removing a tree, debris removal, stump grinding, or cleaning a steeple. All are done in a professional manner. Phone number 662-279-7500. John White Attorney Law, serving Tishomingo County for many years from 123 South Fulton and Iuka, 662-423-3153. Davis Ford and Fulton is Northeast Mississippi's oldest Ford dealer, 50 years of experience. They're proud to sponsor tonight's game. Phone number for them is 662-862-3711. We're an hour into our broadcast. Thanks so much for being with us here on WRMG TV, 12 TV 97. I'm Blake Long, bringing you Tishomingo County baseball action. It is the Itawamba Indians and your Braves battling out here in a division contest, a big one at that. The Braves 7-7 seven and seven overall, but they've lost seven games in a row. Last win for the Braves was during spring break down, I uh, believe, in Gulf Shores, Alabama over West Limestone High School um, out of Alabama. So Braves looking to bounce back and get that first win and break this streak. They need a big win at home over Itawamba 
who defeated the Braves on Tuesday night um, in the first of these two division dates for these two teams. So ball inside as the Indians will bring up these eight and nine of one hole batters. It'll be Dawson West grounded out to the pitcher in his first plate appearance. One one pitch to him. It's gonna be high just a bit. Two and one. Wind up in the delivery. Ball is in the dirt. Gets past the catcher. Three and one. Braves don't need to put this leadoff man on. Last inning, the Indians got their leadoff man on on a hit by a pitch, and he later came around to score on a fielder's choice from Lane Domino. Ty James looking to work around that three and one pitch, and it is high, ball four. Leadoff walk issued to Dawson West. He's at first base. It'll bring up Jake Smith. Now we're going to have a mound visit from head coach Blake Holly of the Tishomingo County Braves. He's going to be meeting with Ty James. Looks like maybe a majority of the infielders are going to be joining him as well. And there you see the visit on the mound on your TV screen. While they're meeting, let's tell you about some more of our great sponsors, including Dr. James Ferguson, the IUCA Animal Clinic. They're located at Highway 20 Fast Health. Healthcare grooming and boarding for your pets. Hours are Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 7 a.m. until 5 p.m. And on Tuesdays and Thursdays, 7 until 1. Phone number is 662-423-3470. Also want to thank Peyton Cummings, your Tishomingo County Chancery Clerk. Also, the IUCA Discount and Drugs. Big thanks to Chris Cornelison, Kurt Butler, and the entire staff there, 662-423-3470. 9039. Also, thank Tiffin Motor Homes of Red Bay, Belmont, and Iuka. They are your Allegro Homes builder. Tiffin Motor Homes sponsoring tonight's game. So, Ty James now alone on the mound. Let's see if he can get a big out here. They're going to show bunt and strike, but it's a live ball. It goes all the way to the backstop, and it's going to be a wild pitch. Perhaps a pass ball issue to the catcher, but nonetheless, the runner will advance to second base, and the Indians have another runner in scoring position with nobody out here in the top of the fifth inning. So Jake Smith in the batter's box. That's Dawson West. Now let's see if Smith shows bunt one more time. He will, and they got the runner leaning. That's a pickoff play. Yes, he's out. Good play there, and boy, they got Dawson West leaning, and he's picked off if you're scoring at home. It's one to six. Pick off play, and now you'll see Smith swinging. He had shown bunt. Originally, James did that just to see if he was going to show bunt again, but boy, they got West leaning, and that's a big-time momentum shifter there for the Tishomingo County Braves. Now it's going to be a ground ball to the pitcher, Ty James. Throw to first is perfect. Out number two. Good job there by Cade Butler crowning that one. And that'll roll us back to the top of the batting order for the Indians, but two big outs in a row. And the leadoff batter for the Indians is Caleb Whittle. He's 0 for 2, grounded out to third base and then flying out to right field in his last plate appearance. And he'll be hit by a pitch. This time looks like that one caught him on the right foot, I believe. An off-speed pitch from James. And that's the second Indian to be hit by a pitch, joined by this young man that's stepping into the batter's box now, Tyler Patterson. Patterson officially 0 for 1, struck out looking in his first plate appearance. Then, of course, like we just mentioned, hit by a pitch in his second turn at the plate, and that was to lead off last inning, lead off the fourth inning. Indians still only have one hit, but we've got a tie ball game one to one. Oh, that one, if Patterson hadn't have dipped down, would have hit him again. So Ty James needs to take a deep breath, find the control, find the shutter switch, and let's get back to the dugout and get the offense on the field once again. 1-0 pitch to Ty James. It's going to be fly ball in the center field. Could be corralled by both. It'll be the center fielder making the play. And a nice job there by the Tishomingo County Braves. The big pickoff play really did it there. But then, of course, the F8 there to retire the sign. For the Indians, no runs on no hits, no errors, and one runner left on base for the Indians. As we reach the fifth inning stretch here in Iuka, the score, Itawamba 1 to Shemingo County 1 as Brady Anglin makes the catch in center field to retire the side for the Indians in their half of the fifth inning. Hey, there's our buddy Kent Mahundro of the Daily Corinthian here. Want to give a big shout-out to Kent. You'll see coverage of today's game and tomorrow's Daily Corinthian. So a big shout-out to my buddy Kent Mahundro here. 
He's standing there in the Tish County dugout. We'll give a big zoom in there to our buddy Kent with the camera. Kent Mahundro here. It's a fist bump from number 10, Braden Maxey there. So Kent Mahundro here covering the game. I want to give a big shout out to him. Let's give a big shout out to more of our sponsors as well, including the good folks over at John, or excuse me, Nunley Truck Company, Herman and Darren Nunley and their entire staff, 662-424-0080. Also want to thank John Dennis Darter, your Tishomingo County Sheriff, for sponsoring our coverage of the Tishomingo County Braves. Among our other speakers this evening, Include Gina McKnight, your Tishomingo County tax collector. Also, Millie Ready Mix, Adult 25 North in Iuka, 662-423-6238. Also, want to thank Piggly Wiggly Locations in Iuka, Red Bay, and Belmont for sponsoring tonight's game. Also, Grace Long Real Estate, let them help you sell your home, 662-423-5555. And another sponsor for our game, H&R Block of Iuka, Red Bay, and Fulton. Of course, they are your tax professionals. Corneliuson leads off the inning for the race. Swing and a miss, strike one there. It'll be Corneliuson, then Maxi, then Brown. Seven, eight, and nine in the batting order if you're keeping up at home. And Corneliuson will take ball one here. One ball and one strike. It's the wind up and the delivery. Ball two, two and one. Braves. I have one run on two hits. They've made two errors in the field. Indians have one run on one hit and no errors themselves. That's a slap to the right side, but caught there. And pardon the camera angle just a bit, but a nice grab there by the right fielder Patterson to retire the side. Corneliuson, a sharp lick, but ended up tailing right back to the right fielder for out number one. So Corneliuson retired for the second time today. He's now 0 for 2. And that brings up Braden Maxey, the starting right fielder for the Braves. He is 0 for 1 with a strikeout in his first plate appearance. Swing and a miss there. Big hack for Braden, strike number one. It's been fun to watch Braden Maxey's career here as the quarterback for the Braves for the past three years. And now as the starting right fielder for the Braves baseball team. It's a nice curveball there and strike number two. Boy, Russell Bunch has settled in here for Itawamba and he's been knowing down some Braves here. He's got an 0-2 count now. Here's the wind up and the offering. High, you can see the catcher in his stance on your TV screen. He was set up high. In fact, almost standing there. The fastball high, ball number one was trying to get Maxi to chase there. One, two pitch, curve ball, didn't get the call. Not a bad pitch though, two and two. Maxi's even to count up. One out here, bottom of the fifth inning. Braves and Indians tied one to one. Here's the pitch. It's going to be down the right field line, but oh, just foul. Man, that would have been at least a double had that one fallen fair. A little bit of an unlucky break there for Braden Maxey, and he will do it again wearing jersey number 10. Braden still at a 2-2 count, so still a chance to, to work the count a little bit. Bunch back on the mound. Here's his windup and the delivery. Fastball going to be fouled out of play back towards the softball and got close to my friend Randall Lindsey's truck on that one. Would serve him right anyway for having an Alabama sticker on the back. <laughs> Randall, if you're watching that one, I know you'll laugh at it at some point. Two and two count. One away. Here's another big pitch here. And it's going to be a curb on the dirt. Called strike three. And he is tagged. Well, I think the uh, the catcher for the Indians made that pitch look worse than it was. It was a very nice off-speed pitch, but the catcher could not corral it. It ended up having to actually tag Maxie out because the ball dropped to the dirt. Two away, though, nonetheless, which brings up Michael Brown, the 9-0 hitter for the Braves. He is the starting catcher for Tishomingo County. He flew out to right field in his first plate appearance. Bunch working on a 1-2-3. It's going to be his first, I believe, since the first inning. And he gets a strike call, 0-1. We're here in the bottom of the fifth inning on WRMG. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Did he check his swing? No. Home plate umpire will make the call, and it's 0-2. I think that was one that you maybe should have gone to the first base umpire for help on, but home plate umpire felt confident and made the call. 0-2 count now, and Bunch well ahead. Fly ball, right field. Brazeman wearing out the right fielder, and Patterson will again make the catch. And for the first time since the very first inning, 
The Braves are going to be retired in order by that young man you see walking to the dugout. That is Russell Bunch, number 22, the starting pitcher for Itawamba AHS. So for the Braves in the fifth inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. Ty James is going to come back to the mound to begin the sixth inning in a tie ball game. The score is Itawamba 1, Tishomingo County 1. We'll go through some sponsors real quick, and then we're going to go through a score recap and tell you how we got to where we are right now. Our sponsors for tonight's game include Sid's Trading Company. So of course, they're here in Iuka. They're your local authorized Branson dealer. Branson known for the three R's, red, rugged, and reliable. With the four to 80 horsepower units available, they also got four-wheel drive diesel tractors and double zero to 40 series models as well. Compact to cab. Sid's can meet your tractor needs. Come test drive your Branson tractor today at Sid's. Or if you've got a bush hog mower, dig. Get it in at Sid's. Phone number 662-424-0025. Founded in 1883, Martin Woodman offers financial services and member benefits to individuals and families throughout the United States. For more information, call Ronnie Cook at 662-423-8477. That's Martin Woodman of America, touching lives and securing futures. If you're tuning in here, we're about an hour and 15 into our broadcast. I'm Blake Long, joined here by a bunch of Roundy Tishomingo County fans. We've got Randall Lindsay covering softball to my right. We've got a 1-1 ball game. Itawamba coming to the plate here in the top of the sixth inning. The Indians have one run on one hit, and here's how they got their run, and it came in the fourth inning. Tyler Patterson led off with a hit by pitch. He advanced to third base on a second base on a wild pitch, got the third on a fielder's choice by Austin King, and then scored on an RBI fielder's choice by Lane Domino. That tied the game. The Braves took a 1-0 lead in the bottom of the second inning when Cade Butler led off with a single. He then moved to second base on a sacrifice bunt by Connor Davis. Got the third on a single to left field by Brady England and scored on an RBI ground out by Alex Corneliuson. And that's the only run of the game so far for the Braves. Again, we are tied up one to one. Line scores. It's one run on one hit, no errors for Itawamba. One run on two hits, two errors for Tishomingo County. We're working here in the bottom of the six as the sun has officially set here. You can tell the lights are on here in Iuka. It's a beautiful evening. I'd say temperature is probably hovering, going to be hovering around 60 degrees by the time this game is over. Just an absolutely gorgeous day after the storm system moved through late yesterday evening. Hope you and yours are doing well. We are pleased to bring you coverage of Tishomingo County Baseball here in WRMG. You'll have much more as the Braves are winding their way, looking to find themselves a postseason berth. And hard to believe that'll be coming up here in just about three or four weeks. And we hope to see those Braves making the 4A state playoffs. Got Bunch in the batter's box to lead off for the Indians. Big opportunity for them with the three, four, five batters. Bunch going to ground that one to third base. The play over to first base. Low throw, but nice job there by Butler to get that out. Good job there. We'll zoom in and give Cade Butler some love on that play. Butler records out number one. And a good job there to get Bunch. Bunch now 0 for 3 at the plate and for the day, but he's doing his job in the on the pitcher's mound, I should say. Gonna bring up King now, the DH, and there's the pitch to him. The ball, nope, hit him. So make that for the last three innings, the Braves have hit a batter, third hit batter of the day for the Indians. King will reach for the first time, excuse me, for the second time in this game. He reached on a fielder's choice in his last at bat. So now the Indians have a runner on first base with one away for Braxton Carroll, the first baseman. Be stepping into the batter's box, maybe bunting here. I'm not sure with one away he will. Carroll has reached base in both of his turns at the plate. Although he does not have a hit, he reached on an error in the second inning and then also walked in his last plate appearance. Here's the pitch to Carroll. Fly ball, and that one may be trouble. Left center field, nice job there. Good job by Caleb Garner running that one down. That was a phenomenal play. And we'll give Caleb some extra love on that here in a minute. But that is a huge catch there to run that one out in the left center field gap. I thought that was going to be down for a double personally. But a good job there by Garner to rob Braxton Carroll of an RBI double. Because King certainly, in my opinion, would have scored from first base. So now two away for Lane Domino. Domino, 0 for 2 himself. He's reached on a fielder's choice. There's a strike. King's going to take off, and he's going to reach without a throw by the catcher. Do we have interference? He's out. Yes, that's the third out. We've got interference on the batter, Lane Domino. I'm going to say he impeded 
the catcher, Brown's opportunity to throw the runner out. And of course, the Wombus coach is going to question this. But the home plate umpire made the decision quickly and firmly. Now you see him explaining it to him now, but that's a break for the Braves, and we will take it. So the batter is called out. We'll call it 2 0. And a break for the Braves. Let's see if they can turn that into a run here. For Itawamba, no runs, no hits, no errors, no runners left on base. And because of that, Ty James faced the minimum in the sixth inning. We're going to the bottom half of the sixth score. Itawamba 1, Tishomingo County 1. Braves need a run here. And then maybe they could preserve it and win the game in seven. Bunch is back on the mound for the Indians. And we'll have that sixth inning for you coming up here in just a few moments. Brought to you by... B&J Supermarket, Highway 365 South in Burnsville, open seven days a week. Your hometown store where the prices are low, 52 weeks in a year. they got fresh produce, awesome meat and dairy department as well. They accept MasterCard and EBT food stamps. Also want to thank Mac Wilder, to Shemingo County Coroner for sponsoring tonight's broadcast. Also, Gatlin's Pharmacy. They ask you, are you spending too much out of your pocket? Are you in a donut hole? Have you ever priced your prescriptions at another store? Come see if we have other options to save you money. See the pharmacist you know and trust, Stanley Page. See if he can save you money at Gatlin's Pharmacy. Through your Health Mart Pharmacy in downtown Tishomingo. The phone number is 662-438-6605. And we thank all of our sponsors for allowing us to be here to cover the Tishomingo County Braves. Beginning coming up for the Braves right here is the top of the lineup. One, two, three, starting with Caleb Garner due up here to face Russell Bunch. They're going to be facing Bunch for the third time this game. Garner, certainly it's a big turn. He is due. He's 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. And you hear the Brave crowd behind me getting fired up. It could be a big inning here for the Braves. Need to score at least one run. Here we go. Garner's at the plate. First pitch is low ball one. Ty James on deck. Josh Watkins in the three hole. And if somebody should reach base, it'll be Cade Butler in the four hole. Pitch is called strike. Not sure on that one. That was low. Coach Holly didn't like that call either. Slapped his hand down the first base, excuse me, down to third base line. A one and one count. Wind up in the delivery. Ball two, two and one. Could have easily been three and oh. We're gonna try and pan the crowd for you here between the next inning. Show you just uh, with a great crowd that we do have. We'll see if we can do that for you here. Uh, base hit, is it gonna be a base hit? No. Boy, another great job there by Patterson, the right fielder. Again, we've been saying how busy he has been all day. And I think I feel like he's got four or five putouts. He has been a, a difference maker having his speed out there because he just robbed Garner there of the hit. I thought that was down off the bat. Um, but Garner is retired for the third time today on the fly out to the right fielder. That'll bring up Ty James. And he will take ball one low. So Garner retired. On the fly out to right, James is 0 for 2. He's flown out to center field, also struck out. So James G as well. He's a big hit here. Braceman held to two hits. We've got time called by the batter. It's a bunch. Had started his wind up, but will have to step off. No balk issued because the batter had called time. 1 and 0 count to James. Here's the wind up in the delivery. Call strike. Inside corner, 1 and 1. There's been three total hits in this game by both teams. And one's got one. Braves have had two. Curveball. Swing and a miss. Big hack there by James. Strike number two. One and two. The count now to Ty James. Pitch is low and in the dirt. Ball number two. Two and two is the count. Watkins on deck, Butler in the hole for the Braves. Big pitch here, high and tight and off the glove of the catcher. And that'll load the count, full count here for Ty James. Need a big walk here, need the base runner any way we can get him here. Don't care if it's a walk, hit by pitch. We need James on base right here. Let's see if we can do that. Full count offering is coming right now. And it's gonna be grounded to the first base side, fielded cleanly by the first baseman. He will beat James to the bag for out number two. So it's on the shoulders of Josh Watkins. See if the Braves can get a base runner here in the sixth inning. See if we can break that tie. Watkins is 0 for 1 himself. 
He reached base last, his last plate appearance was hit by a pitch and he grinded out to the shortstop in his first time up in the first inning. So Watkins batting for the third time today as well. Braves had the top of their batting order due up here in the sixth and have yet to be able to get a base runner. That pitch is outside ball number one. Again, we hope you're enjoying our coverage of Tishomingo County Baseball here in WRMG. Pleasure to be here with you this evening. Fly ball to the right fielder. He'll take a few steps to his run again. He records the out. So Bunch records his second consecutive one, two, three inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. And nobody left on base as we go to the seventh and potentially decisive inning here in Iuka with the score in Awamba one, Tishomingo County one. Good pitchers duel going here between Ty James and between the Indians, Russell Bunch. Itawamba's gonna bring up, we believe, the seven, eight, nine hole hitters to the plates to begin the seventh inning. Tonight's game being brought to you by Triple D's Bucket Service. Barney, Brandon, and Dustin Nick will try their best to meet all your high reach needs, where it's removing a tree, debris removal, stump grinding, or hitting a steeple, all are done in a professional manner. They are licensed, bonded, and insured. You can call 662 279 7500. Today's game also brought to you by Dodger Heat and Air and Commercial Refrigeration. Located at 709 West Eastport Street, Nyuka. They service what they sell. They're your local authorized train dealer. Don't forget, it's hard to stop a train. Phone number is 662-423-9207. Well, let's see if we can't pander across maybe some of our crowd here as we prepare for the seventh inning. Again, a nice contingency of the Tishomingo County faithful here this evening. And we want to make sure that we appreciate them for being here and supporting the Braves here this evening. Old press box crew here as well down the third base side. A lot of Braves fans in the house here this evening. We want to tell you how much we appreciate them. All the way back to the batting cages. And then, of course, we've got them here in the bleachers with us as well. We're getting ready for the seventh inning now as the Indians are going to bring up uh, the bottom of their batting order to the plate here. And actually now we're going to have a discussion between our home plate umpire and one of the first base umpire. We'll pan over and see if anything comes from that. We have been deciding who was coming to the plate. If you'll remember, the last out was recorded on batter's interference, and it will be Lane Domino batting. So let's see who they award. It will be the six, so they're gonna call the runner out of the two U. So that, that was correct in my opinion, and look at here. Domino is hit by a pitch to lead off the seventh inning. So Domino represents the go-ahead run now at first base on the free pass. Looks like maybe Tishomingo County assistant coach Seth Kennedy going to come out and have a word with Ty James. Looks like that's going to be the case. As here comes Kennedy now. And we'll have a meeting on the mound, meeting of the brains, if you will. So while they're meeting there, let's tell you about some more of our outstanding sponsors, including Davis Ford in Fulton, Northeast Mississippi's oldest Ford dealer, 50 years of experience. They're proud to sponsor Tishomingo County Athletics. See Buster and his staff for the best deals around. Save thousands now by calling 662-862-3711. Also want to thank John White, attorney law. He served Tishomingo County for many years from downtown Iuka. Phone number 662-423-3153. So there you see jersey number eight, Ty James, is the man of the hour for the Tishman County Braves. He's been left in the game. There you see Ty's going to step back on the mound. We're going to have baseball action coming up here again in just a second. James has the go-ahead man on first base. He's going to have to go into the stretch here. Indians do, thankfully, though, have their bottom of the order due up. Let's see if they show Bunt here. And here they are. They're showing Bunt. Going to be bunted down the first base line in fair territory. Throws the first base for the out. And they're going to run the runner back to second base. So the bunt successful. If you're scoring at home, it'll be a sacrifice five to three. And the Indians have the go-ahead run in scoring position now after the bunt from Drew Hill. Dawson West. Could get the go-ahead or run home. He's 0 for 1, grounded out to the pitcher. And then he walked and was later out on a pickoff play. A beautiful pickoff play by Ty James on that very move right there. Looked back to second base and got him leaning towards third. 
did Dawson West. Dawson West now back in the batter's box. And of course, that is Lane Domino standing at second base, pitching the dirt ball one. Got some action in the Itawamba bullpen. See if we can get you a number potentially of who's warming up for the Indians here in just a second. But here's the pitch now from Ty James. It's in the dirt. Ball two. Runners going. Throw down to third, and he is safe on the wild pitch in the dirt. So now the go-ahead run is standing at third base in lane domino for Itawamba. That's Thomas Cox warming up in the bullpen for Itawamba. And now we're going to have a time called by Itawamba's head coach, Steve Kerr. Coach Kerr, former head coach at Smithville, had great success there. Looking to duplicate that success at Itawamba. A uh, tradition rich baseball program themselves, just like Tishomingo County. So a big situation here for the Braves. We'll see what they decide to do here. As now James being visited, we got some action in the Brave bullpen. A lefty warming up. Number 20 for Tish County warming up. That's Caleb Huggins, and he's warming up very quickly. The lefty down in the pen warming up. But for now, it's Ty James' ball game. The infield is in for the Braves. Here we go. Strike call on the outside corner. Count two and one. Can the Domino let off by being hit by a pitch. Advanced to second base on the sacrifice bunt by Hill. And now stands at third base. Ground ball back to the pitcher. Looks him back, tosses the first base for the out, and that worked out just about as good as it could have for the Braves and executed perfectly by Todd James. It was a dribbler back to him. He looked back over his right shoulder to make sure that Domino was not going to advance home, and then he tossed it over to Butler at first base for a big, big out number two. So now it's on the shoulders of Jake Smith if you're an Indian fan, and if you're a Brave fan, Ty James is out away from getting out of a big, big pickle. Foul back right to us, strike number one. Jake Smith is one for two in the game. He singled to left field. In fact, it was, he has the only hit for the Indians. If you're a Nilbama fan, you have that going for you. He's the only person to get a hit off Ty James in this game. And he's also grounded out to Ty James in his second at Here's the pitch. Outside corner, strike two. Oh, and two count to Jake Smith, and this is big. You can feel the energy here in the ballpark. Big 0-2 pitch coming here on, from Ty Jake. James. Also need a big stop back here from Michael Brown, the catcher. If it's in the dirt, he's got to block it up. We've got time called now by Smith in the batter's box. So we'll do it again. No balls and two strikes on what Franklin's becoming a little bit of a chilly evening here in Iuka. James with the delivery. Fly ball right field. That might get the Braves out of it. To right field. Yes, sir. The Braves get out of a big... Big jam as Braden Maxey hauls in the fly ball, and the Braves will have a chance to win it in the bottom of the seventh inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. One runner left on base for the Indians, and we head to the bottom of the seventh inning with the score in one by one to Shamingo County. One, you see the huddle in front of the Brave dugout. You expect there's going to be some motivational words used there as Domino led off with a hit by pitch and got all the way to third base, but he was stranded there, got to third base with one out, and the Indians could not bring him home. So the Braves now have a chance to win it here. In the bottom of the seventh inning, we're going to do it off Russell Bunch, who's retired seven in a row for the Indians. He's uh, at his best right now, to be quite honest. We'll see if we can scratch a run across, though. The Indians still have only got one hit, one run on one hit. Braves have a run on two hits, and they have not had a hit since the second inning off of Bunch. In fact, Bunch has retired eight in a row. Last man to reach base was Connor Davis, and it was on a fielder's choice. Flats game being brought to you by Peyton Cummings, your Tisha Mingo County Chancery Clerk. Also, the IUQ Discount Drugs, Pharmacy Gifts, Driving Window and Medication Synchronization. Big thanks to pharmacist Chris Cornelison and Kurt Butler, 662-423-9039. Also want to thank Tiffin Motor Homes of Red Bay, Belmont, and IUCA, featuring the Allegro Homes. Also sponsoring tonight's game is the IUCA Monument Company. Thanks to IUCA Discount Drugs, the highest quality at a reasonable price, 662-423-3203. So here we go in the bottom of the seventh inning. It's Bunch still on the mound for the Indians. Here's the pitch, outside ball one. We did see warming up in the bullpen during the top half of the inning, Thomas Cox, who is currently playing in left field for the Indians. He was warming up in the bullpen down the right field line. Ball two here. 
Again, this is Cade Butler in the batter's box. He is one for one. He's singled to the right side and then walked. So he's got a perfect on base percentage this game. Needs to get on a third time. High and tight ball three. And that pitch fairly close to hitting Butler. Always a classic when Itawamba and Tishomingo County meet on the baseball diamond. Nothing different tonight as Butler will take strike one. A uh, three one count now to Cade Butler. Quickly becoming a chilly night here on the hill at Tishomingo County High School. Fly ball, right field, it's crushed a long way. Time time to go back, and he will make the catch. My goodness. At the wall, Cade Butler, he put a shot on that one, a rocketed shot to right field, but that is just the absolute wrong spot to hit it to tonight. Patterson has done a phenomenal job in right field for Itawamba, and has quite frankly robbed the Braves of a couple of hits. Butler retired for the first time this game. Again, Tyler Patterson, wearing jersey number 33 for the Indians, has had an outstanding game in right field, and he robs Butler there of extra bases. So now with one away, Connor Davis in the batter's box. He's 0 for 1 officially. We'll give you what he's done here after this pitch, and it's a called strike one and one count now to Davis. Davis has hit a sacrifice bunt, and he's also hit into a fielder's choice, a bunted into a fielder's choice, I'd say. So he's bunted in his first two at-bats. This is the first time we'll get to see him swing a bat but he takes strike two there, one ball and two strikes. The Braves can't score. We're going to be going to extra innings here in Iuka. And that's a good pitch there. Doesn't get the call, two and two. Indian fans you can hear behind me wanted that call, but to no avail, two and two count to Connor Davis, the designated hitter for the Braves. Here it comes. It's outside ball three. That's another close pitch, but that one certainly was a ball outside. Catcher had to reach outside to get that one into the left-handed batter's box. Full count now to Davis. Big pitch coming from Bunch, and here it is right now. Fouled off. We'll do it again. Brady England on deck for the Braves, followed by Alex Corneliuson if we can get that far, and we certainly hope that we do. Full count now to Connor Davis, the DH for Tishomingo County. Wind up and the delivery. Fouled away again. It's going to be going on to the softball field. That one came close to hitting the Braves shortstop, but thankfully uh, did not uh, hit her. So it's always, again, a dangerous situation. Big pitch here. Full count. Walked him. Connor Davis aboard for the first time in this game. Officially will remain at 0 for 1 in the contest. And Davis will show you him and Coach McKay there in the first base batter's box if you're watching the TV replay. There's Coach McKay giving some wise words. That'll bring up now the lefty for Tishomingo County in the batter's box. That's Brady Anglin. Pitch in the dirt and he's going to second base. Winning run for the Braves is in scoring position after the wild pitch from Russell Bunch, and there he is right there. It's Connor Davis standing at second base. Wild pitch after the walk, and looks like they're going to have an intentional walk right here, and they're going to have, yep, as Brady England's going to be put on intentionally. He's going to trot down to first base. We're going to follow him there. And that will set up the double play now, though, for Itawamba. And you got to think that's what Coach Kerr is thinking about. Anglin had hit into a double play in his last plate appearance. And now they're going to try and get Corneliuson to do the same. Alex Corneliuson is in the batter's box now for the break. We'll give you what he's done in this game here in just a moment. Bunch, still the pitcher for the Indians. He, runners at first and second, one away in a tie ball game, one to one. Here's the pitch. Called strike. Corneliuson is 0 for 2 in the game, but has accounted for the only RBI for the Braves on a ground out in the second inning. On RBI ground out, then he flew out to right field in his second plate appearance. 0 for 2 officially, but does have the RBI. 0-1 count. Here comes the pitch to Corneliuson. The curveball in the dirt. Nice block there by Hill. And that's ball number one. One and one count to Corneliuson. Again, the winning run. Standing on second base at the top of your TV screen right now 
That is Connor Davis. Brady England's on first base after being intentionally walked. First baseman is playing in front of the runner. Swing and a miss there. Big hack from Corneliuson. And that's strike number two. One ball, two strikes. Big pitch coming here. Here's the pitch. Ground ball, going to go foul down the right field line. So count remains one ball and two strikes here. It's been an exciting game. Don't forget, if you want to get a copy of tonight's game on DVD, just contact Jack or Denisa Ivy, 662-454-9797. Got a great finish coming your way here, whether we go to extras or not. We certainly hope that's not the case. Here's the one-two pitch, and it's high. Nearly hit Corneliuson. But it's ball number two, two balls and two strikes. Boy, I see Alex's dad and former Brave baseball player himself, Mr. Chris Cornelison to my left, which would make Daddy proud if he could get a big RBI single right here. Alex facing a 2-2 count. Here is the pitch. Ground ball, second baseman. Got to break up the double play. There's four to six, and he's safe at first base. So the winning run gets to third base, and we'll show it to you right here. Connor Davis going to represent the winning run for Tishomingo County. There he is on third base. And it looks like we're going to have a pinch hitter for Tishomingo County. We'll get you that information here in just a minute. As Cornelius reaches on the fielder's choice, England is retired 4-6 to six on the putout. Pinch hitter for the Braves will be Connor Bonds wearing jersey number 17 for the Braves. Connor Bonds and one of the biggest at bats of his young career coming right here. We'll give you a zoom in shot here. We'll move from Davis here to Connor Bonds in the batter's box. There he is wearing jersey number 17 for the Braves. Two late here in the seventh inning. Braves and Indians in a 1 1 tie. Runners on the corners, two away. Bonds takes a big hack, swings and misses, strike number one. Connor Bonds, pinch hitting for Braden Maxey, who had struck out twice in the game already. Here's the pitch. Fly ball, right field, and it's going to be right at the right fielder. And we are going to extra innings here in Iuka. No runs on no hits. There were no errors. Two runners left on base. And we will head to extra innings here in Iuka with the score. Itawamba 1, Tishomingo County 1. I told you we had a classic going on here. And that certainly has proven to be the case. We play on here in Iuka. And the score again, it is Itawamba 1, Tishomingo County 1. We'll see if Ty James remains the pitcher for the Braves. Looks like it will not be. Ty James is going to have a new arm for the Braves. It's going to be number 4, Brady Anglin. Going to be taking the mound for the Braves. We'll see the adjustments in the lineup card here in just a few minutes. England going to be moving over from center field. So the new center fielder will be Alex Corneliuson. And then moving to shortstop is number eight, Ty James. So there's, we'll go through those positions one more time. England moving from center field to pitcher. New center fielder will be Alex Corneliuson. And the new shortstop will be Ty James, who went seven innings. Allowed just one hit, a phenomenal performance by the Northeast Community College signee, Ty James. Uh, just simply superb for that young man. Um, and then he will be relieved now by Brady Anglin. We'll give you a zoom in shot here on the TV broadcast of Brady Anglin. He'll be the first relief pitcher in the game. It'll been the Bunch and James show for seven full innings. And now we're going to hand it off here to Brady Anglin. Extra innings in this Division one for a tilt. The line score, Itawamba has one run on only one hit, no errors. Tishomingo County has one run on just two hits and two errors themselves. But the Braves have not had a base hit since the second inning. Itawamba's only hit coming in the third inning on a single by Jake Smith. Our Itawamba fan crew sitting here to the right. They've been loud and rowdy all game long, haven't you guys? Pulling for the Indians to win a lot. A big crowd here from Fulton tonight. 
And we certainly hope that they'll have a safe trip back whenever the game is done. We are in the eighth inning, fellas. And the Braves and the Indians tied one to one. Indians won Tuesday night 13 to three over the Braves. So the Indians trying to pull a sweep over Tishomingo County here this evening. And that'll bring up the, for the Indians in the eighth inning, is gonna be the top of the lineup, Whittle, Patterson, and Bunch will be due up. And it's Caleb Whittle stepping in the batter's box now to face England. Whittle, 0 for 2 in the game. He has grounded out to third base, flied out to right field, and has been hit by a pitch. So Whittle will step into the batter's box now to face Brady Anglin, the lefty, the southpaw for the Braves, He's going to step on the mound, about to deliver his first pitch of the game. Extra innings here. Now you can just tuning in. Blake Long here with you. And here we go. It's going to be a ground ball to the shortstop. going to be a tough play for Ty James. Backhand play, safe. An infield single to lean off for the Indians. So the Indians going to have the go-ahead run once again on base. And we have time called here. An infield single, only the second hit of the game for the Indians. It was a nice play there by Ty James. Had to go to his right, make a backhanded play, and then make a long throw across the bag. Butler did all he could at first base, but Whittle beat the play out for an infield single. So second hit of the game for the Indians. And they've got to go ahead around the board now. Tyler Patterson in the batter's box. He's 0 for 2. Struck out looking. Hit by a pitch. Fly out to center field. May see him bunt here. Nope. And a swing and miss. Strike number one. Today's game being brought to you by H&R Block of IU Red Bay and Fulton. They're your tax professionals. Also, big thanks to Grace Long Real Estate. Let them help you sell your home. 662-423-5555. Grace and her staff will work hard for you. A one pitch, Canal going to show bunt, and it would take a high ball number one. We did fail to mention that Braden Maxey did re-enter the game in right field. Uh, Bonds had pinch hit for him, but Maxey has re-entered the game to begin the eighth inning, and he's in right field. Another bunt popped right back up, and it is caught for the out. Boy, that breaking ball from England ran right inside on Patterson, and he failed to retract the bat. Popped it straight up in the air. That's about as easy of an out as you will see all game long. Anglin gets the out for out number one. That'll bring up the pitcher number 22, Russell Bunch. Still have the go-ahead run at first base. Now one away for the Indians. Bunch 0 for 3. Struck out in his first plate appearance. And then is grounded out to third base in two consecutive plate appearances. Anglin in the windup. Here's the delivery. Pitch in the dirt gets right through the wickets of the catcher. And now the go-ahead run in scoring position on the wild pitch from Brady Anglin. Today's game also being brought to you by Piggly Wiggly. With locations in Iuka, Red Bay, and Belmont. You get the lowest prices. They are your hometown friendly service. Your hometown grocery store that supports all the local teams here on TV 12 and TV 97. Also big thanks to Milligan Ready Mix. Still 25 North in Iuka, 662-423-6238. Looks like the... the Braves are going to pull the same trick that the Indians are going to do. They're going to send P Bunch to first base on an intentional pass to set up the old double play. Now we're going to have a courtesy runner, I believe, in the game for the Indians. And we will get his name. Number three for the Indians is in the game. And that is Chatham for the Indians. So he's in the game now. So Chatham is the courtesy runner at first base for Itawamba. One away, Anglin. It's a base hit to left field. Indians have a chance here. He's going to stay at third base. A wise move as Garner came up firing there, and I think they would have had the out at home plate. So the Indians have loaded the bases here off of reliever Brady Anglin, and you can see... Based off the camera's movement, there are some rowdy Indians here to my right. Going to do our best to study the camera, but King there with the single to left field, the third hit of the game for Itawamba, the second this inning. And now the Braves are playing the infield in with pa Braxton Carroll at the plate. Swing and a miss there, a big hack for Carroll, strike number one. Carroll 
is 0 for 2 in this game. He's reached on an error, has walked, and he flew out to left field. Carroll, the right-handed batter, wearing jersey number 15. Anglin, and the windup here is the delivery. Curveball, strike two, beautiful pitch there from Brady Anglin. Now 0 and 2. Carroll has reached base twice in the game. Looks like the catcher setting up outside. Let's see what the pitch is here. Looking maybe a fastball hit the corner. Here we go. It's a fastball high and outside. Ball one. One ball, two strikes. Tried to get Carroll to chase there. You can see that pitch uh, from a mile away. Braves trying to get him to go after that one. Pitching coach Seth Kennedy for the Braves. Trying to help Anglin get out of this one. 1-2 one, offering. Outside, got him to swing and miss. Strike out. And that's out number two. And the Braves can move back to regular depth in the field. That's going to be on the bat of Lane Domino to get the Indians into the lead for the first time in this game. Domino, though, has got the first, the only RBI of the game for the Indians on a fielder's choice there in the fourth inning. On an RBI fielder's choice, he's also reached on a hit by pitch, and he's also grounded into a 6-4-3 double play. Domino, swing and a miss there, and it's wild pitch. Can they get the runner at home plate? No, he's safe, and the Indians have the lead. It was a swing and a miss, and it got away from the catcher. And for the first time in this game, Itawamba has taken a lead at 2-1. to one. Wow, that was similar to the Mississippi State game last night. If you were watching that game up late like I was, where State scored their go-ahead run on a wild pitch. So coming home is Caleb Whittle, who led off with an infield single. Now the Indians have runners at second and third. Two away, one strike on the batter, and that's strike two. 0-2 count now. And that state last night, the wild pitch was on a strikeout at that. So now 0-2 again. We've got some rowdy Indians to my right, shaking our camera a little bit. We apologize there, folks. And the pitch, swing and a miss, strike three. But the damage is done for the Braves. Got a run on two hits, no errors, two runners left on base. And for the first time in this game, Tishomingo County trails. And we head to the bottom of the eighth inning. The score, Itawamba 2, Tishomingo County 1. So the crucial bottom of the eighth inning coming up. And it's going to be brought to you by a million rating mixed old 25 North and Iuka 662 423 6238. Also, big thanks to Tishomingo County tax collector Gina McNatt. Also, the Nunley Trucking Company, Herman and Darren Nunley and their entire staff, 662-424-0080. Also, want to thank your Tishomingo County Sheriff, John Dennis Daughtry, sponsoring tonight's game. Also, we want to remind you that now is the time to get that new mower. The prices have never been better, and these selections are great. Bush Hog zero-turn mowers are available, and they are de dependable, and they are solid. Offered in the state commercial and professional series as well. Whether you're a lawn care professional who requires the productivity and dependability in your machine or a homeowner who wants professional results in a fraction of the time, smile. Bush Hog has the mower to meet your needs. So if you've got a Bush Hog mower dig, get it in at Sid's. Phone number is 662-424-0025. Folks, I remind you, as a modern woman of America can help you plan for life from protection to saving to retirement. The member-owned Fraternal Financial Services Organization also offers member benefits and local volunteer opportunities. Call Ronnie Cook for more information, 662-423-8477. Now, here's another question. There's pitch count rules now in high school baseball enforced by the National Federation of High School Athletic Associations during the past offseason. I believe the coaching staffs were just conferring as to what the pitch count is for Russell Bunch he is back on the mound here to begin the bottom of the eighth inning. And for the Braves, we'll see who they've got coming to the plate right now. Going to be jersey number 23, Michael Brown. It'll be 9-1-2 for the Braves here in the eighth. Braves must get one to extend the game, two to win. Braves had a chance at the bottom of the seventh, got a runner to the third base, but could not get the runner in. And now it's crunch time now for the Tishomingo County Braves. Here we go. Michael Brown starts us off. He's 0 for 2. He's flying out to right field 
in both of his plate appearances. Indians ahead two to one here as we begin the bottom of the eighth inning. Strike number one to Michael Brown. And we are in extra innings here. Blake Long joining here live from Tishman County High School. For those of you listening on our Mixler app, thanks so much for doing so. Again, all of our broadcast here of Tish County Sports, or let's say a majority of them, because we do have Randall covering softball right now, and he is not live, but you can just rest assured. Um, we'll be broadcasting live WRMGRadio.com. Click the TCHS Sports link. You can listen to the Braves live from anywhere in the world. 0-2 pitch coming here. Brown wanted to off right it, but did not. And the curveball did go outside. Ball one. One ball and two strikes. Again, Michael Brown, 0 for 2 in the game. Big pitch coming here. Brown, here it comes. Fouled off just above us. So we're going to do the one-two pitch again. I want to say a big thank you again to all of our phenomenal sponsors for bringing you Tishomingo County baseball here this evening. And, of course, these are the same sponsors that are bringing you Tishomingo County softball as well this evening just to my right here. The Lady Braves are playing Houston High School in a division game for them. This, of course, a Division I 4A game. Braves seeking to snap um, a seven-game losing streak here this evening. Wind up in the pitch, strike three. Blew a fastball right by Michael Brown, and there's one away now here in the eighth, but the good news, that brings up the top of the batting order for Tishomingo County. It's Caleb Garner who will step into the batter's box. The left fielder for the Braves made a solid play, I believe, in the top of the seventh inning. Ran down a ball in the left center field gap for an out. That was a big, big play. Helped the Braves make it to extra innings. Garner will back out of the way. Coach Blake Holly asking, why didn't you take that one for a hit by a pitch? Could have, but it's ball one. We'll take that one ball, no strikes. Garner seeking to reach for the first time in this game off of Bunch. And now he's taking two balls. Two balls, no strikes. Garner struck out in his first and second plate appearances then flew out to right field in his last time. I believe that was in the sixth inning. Garner takes that one down the middle, strike number one at the knees. Two balls and one strike. And the Indians are ahead two to one. They have two runs on three hits, no errors. Braves have one run on two hits and two errors. None of the errors affected uh, the scoring, though, for Itawamba. Ball three. It was a close one, though. Um, sharp eye there by Garner. Three balls and one strike now to Caleb Garner. Wind up and the offering. We strike two. And the umpire has rung him up, but that is strike only number two. Haven't seen that in a while, but our uh, home plate umpire got one ahead of himself. But a full count pitch here, all seriousness now implied here. Garner's got to rebound and refocus here. And that is strike three there for Garner. So now the last hope for the Braves is Ty James, the starting pitcher. He's going to get a no decision in this game. He only allowed one run on one hit, a phenomenal performance. And you would certainly hate for it to be overshadowed by uh, the Braves falling here in the one run game. James at the plate, he's now moved to shortstop here in the top of the eighth inning. And now we're going to have a mound visit by the Indians. Let's go ahead and tell you what Ty has done this game. He struck out, flied out to center field, and grounded out to first base. He's 0 for 3 in this game. Indians are going to meet on the mound. Now it looks like Coach Holly's going to come in and meet with uh, Ty James and members of the Braves. Need a big hit here. Ty has to get on somehow, some way. Real quick, while we are uh, have a pause in play, I want to tell you our phenomenal sponsors include Mac Wallman, Tishomingo County Corner, and also Gantlin's Pharmacy in downtown Tishomingo, B&J Supermarket in Burnsville, also Dr. Heat and Air, and Commercial Refrigeration in Iuka, Triple D's Bucket Service, Barney Brandon, and Dustin Dick. We also want to thank John White, Attorney at Law, also Davis Ford in Fulton. Big thanks as well to the Iuka, excuse me, the Iuka Animal Clinic, also Peyton Cummings, Tishomingo County Chancery Clerk. Big thanks to Iuka Discount Drugs, as well as Tiffin Motor Homes, in Red Bay, Belmont, and Ayuka, and also the Ayuka Monument Company. And it looks like we're going to have a pitching change for the Indians. Maybe Bunch had uh, hit that pitch count limit that we were talking about. Um, but the Indians are going to go uh, to a reliever, and I believe that we had mentioned that they had somebody warming up in the bullpen in the seventh inning. And it's going to be the Submariner here wearing jersey number six for Itawamba. There you see him on your TV screen. That is number six, Thomas Cox, the left fielder for the Indians. A bunch is going to move over to third base, and we'll see who they um, elect to go to left field. 
believe that they are going to take the third baseman, Dawson West, out of the game and insert a new left fielder. I didn't see the number of the young man that ran out there just a moment ago. Um, but two outs here. Here's the situation. Braves are trailing 2-1 to one here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Um, and they have two away, nobody on base. And this is a safe situation for Thomas Cox, the new pitcher for Itawamba. J Ty James at the plate when we resume here. He's got a fresh count, 0-0. Zero and zero. Um, and that's where we stand here. Braves trailing 2-1. to one. Go ahead run scored in the top of the eighth inning on a wild pitch. Um, so Ty James, of course, is a starting pitcher for the Braves. Going to get a no decision here today regardless of what happens. Seven phenomenal innings of one hit ball. And a shame that he won't factor in the decision here. He certainly deserved. Um, it was a winnable performance here tonight. Can't say enough about the job that Ty James uh, did on the mound this evening for the Tishomingo County Braves. The Indians, though, won out away from a win, and it's going to be James against the Submariner, Thomas Cox. Let's continue. Our sponsors want to thank as well the Ike Monument Company. Big thanks to John and Starter, your Tishomingo County Sheriff. We also want to thank the Nunley Trucking Company, Gina McNatt, your Tishomingo County Tax Collector, for sponsoring tonight's game. As there you see Ty James on your TV screen. We're two hours into our broadcast now. Big thanks for you tuning in. Blake Long here with you. And we are in extra innings, bottom of the eighth inning. It's Itawamba 2, Tishomingo County 1. Braves down to their final out here. And uh, hopefully we can extend this inning uh, for quite a bit. I want to thank as well our sponsors, Million Ready Mix. Also, Piggly Wiggly of Iuka, Red Bay, and Belmont. I want to thank Grace Long Real Estate in Iuka. Also, H&R Block locations in Iuka, Red Bay, and Fulton. I want to thank Sid Whitehurst and Sid's Training Company. And also, Ronnie Cook and Modern Woodmen of America. They are your sponsors for Tishomingo County Braves Baseball. This evening, if you want to sponsor Braves Baseball or Softball for the remainder of the season, we certainly invite you to check into that information by calling Jack or Denisa Ivy at 662-454-9797. Become a sponsor of Brave Baseball or Softball here on WRMG. Ty James takes strike one from Thomas Cox. Again, James 0 for 3 in the game. Big situation here for James, the senior for the Braves, the Northeast signee. Here's the pitch. It's inside, ball one. One ball and one strike now to Ty James. If you've been seeing the TV screen shake, it's because we had some uh, rowdy youngsters, Indian fans to my right, and they've been active all game long. And so we hope you've enjoyed the view of the game. It's been a pleasure here pulling double duty with the commentator and the cameraman as well. Hope you've uh, enjoyed the view here. We had a great game to call, great game to video, great game to just be at as a fan of baseball. And Ty James has now worked the count to three and one. Submariner, a pitch away from walking James. Let's see what happens here on the 3-1. And it's outside and high, which the Braves have the tying run on base with two away. And James is on base for the first time in this game. And now that he is not the pitcher, he will have to run. And now number 11, the, catch, excuse me, the third baseman, Josh Watkins, will be at the plate for Tishomingo County. Watkins, 0 for 2, has grounded out to the shortstop. He's been hit by a pitch, and he has flied out to the right fielder. Swings and misses of the pitch inside there for strike number one. Watkins. The third baseman for the Braves. 0-1 count to him. Here comes the pitch from Cox. And it's inside corner strike number two. And that one brings out the chagrin of the Braves fans. And that one uh, definitely an iffy pitch. Might have had that inside corner there. And it's 0-2. Braves down to their final strike. Josh Watkins, Ty James is on first base. And here's the pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three, and the Indians have come from behind and swept the Braves here this evening. For the Braves in the eighth inning, no runs on, no hits, no errors, one runner left on base. And the final score will be Itawamba 2, Tishomingo County 1. We'll quickly go through uh, how the game kind of came to be. And it was, again, the Braves had a run in the bottom of the second inning. 
It was Cade Butler scoring on an RBI ground out from Alex Corneliuson. Then Indawama comes back in the fourth inning and scores on an RBI fielder's choice from Lane Domino. And then finally a wild pitch in the eighth inning brings home Caleb Whittle. And that is how Itawamba will win the game. Final line score, it was a run in the fourth for the Indians, a run in the eighth for Itawamba to win it. Two runs on three hits, no errors in the field for Itawamba. And then as well for the Braves, they scored their solo run in the second inning, one run on two hits, and they made two errors earlier in the game. And the Braves going to take a hard luck loss here. And boy, that's a tough one to swallow right there. Uh, Ty James, a phenomenal effort. He went seven innings of one hit ball. Um, certainly does not deserve, the Braves do not deserve to lose this game. Ty James does not deserve to lose this game. Um, a phenomenal effort. I mean, congratulations. The hats off to the Indians who did what they had to do um, and came out with a big Division I for a win here today. So. Final score, one more time, Itawamba 2, Tishomingo County 1. For everybody here at WRMG, I'm Blake Long saying so long from Iuka. Good evening and God bless. This has been Tishomingo County Baseball on WRMG TV 12, TV 97.